Welcome to F YouTube, the only consumer item that lasts for longer than you want it to. Our first FU comes from Marie from Melbourne. My little treasure is starting school this year. I thought we'd head to the Aldi school shoe sale to get some shoes to go for a school uniform. Ah, Aldi, the perfect place to buy school shoes, milk, or a jet ski. But Marie says the Aldi back to school special buys on kids leather joggers made to last didn't last long in store. We went to seven Aldis by 11 a.m. When I asked, all of them said that they only got one of each style shoe in each size. My little treasure missed out. Seven stores had all sold out and they only stocked one pair in each size? How come Aldi have so much crap you don't want? Unicycle, get your Aldi unicycle. But almost none of what you actually need. I just want to buy joggers. Who needs joggers when you have a unicycle? Perhaps Aldi should go back to school to learn about bait advertising, which is... Hilters for four bucks, uh, worms two dollars. No, no, no. The other bait advertising? Oh, uh, businesses who advertise goods must offer them in quantities that are reasonable and they shouldn't advertise if there are reasonable grounds for believing they won't be able to offer them for a reasonable period. Basically, you can't advertise something if you don't have a reasonable amount of stock. And this isn't the first time that Aldi has been caught short. In 2017, they advertised a kid's car and a ride on tractor, which sold out in minutes because according to news reports, they only kept one of each in stock. Too late. The ACCC says that if an advertised product is in short supply, consumers should be told that in a clear, specific, and highly visible way. Aldi's back to school ad did have some fine print, but to read it, I'd need some sort of Aldi microscope. We sell microscopes for some reason. Oh, thank you. It says, While stocks last, please note stocks are limited and will vary between stores despite our careful planning. We apologize if selected stocks may sell out on the first day due to unexpectedly high demand. If you apologize for stock shortages before the first day of a sale, Selling out hardly seems unexpected. And that Aldi fine print isn't highly visible, clear, or specific. Stocking Aldi stores with one pair of shoes per size for a back-to-school sale doesn't sound like careful planning. Got your delivery here, uh, 40,000 unicycles and one pair of shoes. Excellent, just as we planned. We put this to Aldi and they said, In the area of Casey, stock was not allocated in an optimal manner. Optimal is another word for we failed to match demand of colour and size variants in a small selection of stores. We do feel, however, that we still comply with Section 35 of the Australian Consumer Law. Well, we feel differently. The ACCC says if there's no reasonable chance the offer will be available, companies should offer corrective action, such as a rain check or a substitute product. We asked Aldi why they didn't offer Marie one, and they said, so long! If you think a store is bait advertising, you should ask them for a remedy, like a replacement product, but make sure it's an appropriate replacement. Aldi ran out of school shoes, so they gave me these. One thing we hear a lot is there's a big difference between knowing your consumer rights and actually getting a company to give you what you're entitled to. And it's a fair point. I mean, it's easy for us to bang on about your right to a repair, replacement or refund. From the top of our ivory tower at the ABC. But in the real world, businesses often push back. In 2017, 29,000 people reported consumer guarantee issues to the ACCC, which is up 39%. And a recent federal court case between the ACCC and LG shows some of the tactics that companies use to fob you off, even if you know your consumer rights. The customers bought LG TVs, which became faulty after just a few years. Damn it, but my favorite show's on, right after this rubbish. Now, LG knows a thing or two about faulty products. In 2018, their smart home robot Chloe failed during a live unveiling. Allow me to introduce Chloe. Hello, Chloe. Good morning, Dave. Chloe, am I ready on my washer and cycle? Even robots have bad days. Chloe, what's for dinner tonight? Okay, Chloe is not gonna talk to me. Chloe doesn't like me, evidently. LG refused to pay the full cost of repairing the TVs because they were out of warranty and said they'd only cover parts, parts only. And as we all know, the consumer guarantees mean goods must be reasonably durable regardless of the manufacturer's warranty. 
I mean, even LG's stupid helper robot should know that. Chloe, tell me my rights under the consumer law. Yes, I will put your tights under the sauna door. LG made these parts-only offers after one of the customers said, This falls well below what you expect as a reasonable lifetime for the product. LG can offer to cover the cost of the parts. And after one of the retailers told them, Spending $1,750 would give one the expectation of more than two years' service. If they push this with consumer affairs, they will win. At this point in time, LG have agreed to cover parts. They only changed their tune when the head legal counsel of the good guys wrote an email. LG need to understand that this is a claim under the ACL. Their manufacturer's warranty is totally irrelevant. LG will reimburse both the parts and the labour cost. We will cover both parts and labour. The ACCC's case against LG is still going through the courts. But the thing to remember is, while businesses may give you the impression that there's nothing we can do, or it's their final position, or the unit is outside the manufacturer's warranty, this is all a load of garbage. It's just a tactic companies use to make you doubt yourself, give up, or accept less than you're entitled to. Which makes it even more important you stand your ground, know your consumer rights, and know what you can do if businesses don't honour their obligations. Yeah, send them a turd in the mail. No, you can use the ACCC's complaint letter tool to write a formal complaint to the business, or report them to your state consumer affairs body. And hey, why not send it to us here at the checkout too? If you insist. If they get enough complaints, they might end up in court, or being publicly shamed on the checkout. Like Chloe. Well, that's it for tonight's F YouTube. We'll see you next week. Open the studio door, please, Chloe. Chloe? Sorry, Scott. I'm afraid I can't do that.